I really like this Lenovo Yoga Book. It's one of the coolest and most futuristic looking laptops I've ever used. Just look at it with its insanely thin and light design. This super cool Halo keyboard. There's no buttons or keys whatsoever. It's completely touch and it also doubles as an A5 size doodle or drawing or sketch pad, which you can use with the bundled stylus. So there's a lot going for the Yoga Book. It's really interesting and credit to Lenovo for trying something a little bit different. But there are some issues with it. It may not be the laptop replacement you want. And in this Windows version, I'm not, which does cost more, I'm not sure I'm completely sold on it. There are a few issues with it. So let's find out what's good, what's bad, and whether you should buy one. The Yoga Book is a seriously premium looking device with its carbon black aluminium body and book binder style silver hinge. But not only does it look good, but at just 1.5 pounds, it's really lightweight and weighs less than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. But as good as it looks on the outside, the real magic happens when you open it up. And this is a full flippy style uh, tablet, which you can go all the way around. So you can either use it in tablet mode or you can use it like a normal clamshell or a tent mode or any other way you like. Inside, you're treated to a completely flat slate surface in place of a physical keyboard and a 10.1 inch full HD touchscreen with admittedly fairly chunky bezels, which makes it look a bit like an old Android tablet. And while you can get the Android version of the Yoga Book, this is the full fat Windows 10 version, which costs 50 more at 550 pounds or $550. There's also a Chrome OS version coming soon. As you can see, there are no physical keys at all. Instead, you get a capacitive touch Halo keyboard, which lights up. It looks great, but as you'd expect, it's basically the same as typing on a virtual keyboard on a screen, which means anything more than a couple of sentences or the odd note becomes a chore to type. You do get haptic feedback, the same way you might get a vibration on the screen if you use a virtual keyboard. And because it is a completely flat surface, you won't be able to touch type because you can't feel between the different keys. So it does slow you down quite significantly. I went to typingtest.com on my uh, computer here using this mechanical keyboard and I scored 113 words per minute with 11 mistakes. I then did the exact same test on the Yoga Book and got around 30 words per minute with a similar amount of mistakes, which is a significant slowdown. So this is not a laptop replacement. This is not for writing essays or scripts or anything like that. It is a cool looking keyboard, but it's a virtual keyboard at the end of the day. And that's gonna be a big problem for a lot of people. But that is only half the story. If you tap the little pen icon at the top right of the keyboard, it disappears completely and gives you what Lenovo call a create pad surface, which is the same size as an A5 piece of paper. And with this, you can then draw on a variety of apps, whether it's uh, sticky notes or paints or sketch pad with the bundled stylus digitizer pen. Now this pen here has 2048 levels of pressure and works at 100 degree angles. And the detection and responsiveness is very impressive. And not only that in the box, you get a physical pad of paper. It's not special paper, you can use any kind you'd like, but it comes in a little neat uh, sort of notepad like this. And then you can draw with the stylus if you then remove the lid, the tip if you will, and then add in one of the actual physical biro ballpoint pen tips into the stylus. You can then draw on the paper any way you want. You can use it as a surface like this and you end up with a physical copy you've drawn on the paper as well as a digital version of it. So it's cool if you're going to be making, you know, comic books or if you want um, notes that you're, you know, you prefer to handwrite notes, but you want a digital version of it for note taking for minutes. That's pretty cool. I actually went to a Lunivo event not long ago where they had the artist behind some of the Judge Dredd comics and he'd done some album art covers and he was doing caricatures of people on this drawing, physically drawing the uh, caricature on the paper, having it come up on the screen and then projecting it out onto a huge surface. So there's some really cool and innovative uses for the Yoga Book. So Lenovo isn't pushing the Yoga Book as a laptop replacement. It doesn't have the power or of course that physical keyboard that most of us need to get some proper work done or even run demanding applications or games. But if you consider it more of a secondary device or a, a tablet which is best suited to taking into meetings, uh, if you're an artist for drawing or sketching, or just to browse the web and watch videos in tablet mode, it actually ticks all the boxes. 
Most of the time I do find myself using the yoga book in tablet mode, scrolling through websites, watching YouTube videos, and the 10.1 inch 1280 by 1200 display looks great thanks to that IPS panel which produces 102% of the sRGB color gamut. So the screen is vibrant and lovely to look at, although it is quite glossy and reflective. So using it outside or with a bright light behind you may be a little bit tricky. Now in terms of performance, you may be a bit put off by the spec sheet. It has a low power Intel 2.4 gigahertz Atom X5 Z8550 processor and four gigabytes of RAM, which doesn't sound like a lot for a Windows tablet. In reality though, it actually performs surprisingly well doing basic tasks like running uh, office apps, watching full HD videos, and running less intensive drawing or sketching apps. And I didn't actually notice that much slowdown, even with say six Chrome tabs open and a Netflix stream. For office work, for web browsing, for use as a tablet, it's not too bad at all actually. As for storage, you get 64 gigs built in with support for up to 128 gigabyte micro SD cards. But the good news is thanks to that relatively low full HD screen resolution and that low power processor and the big 8,500 milliamp hour battery, the Yoga Book has an impressive battery life. Uh, an hour of Netflix on this used around 13% of the battery, so you can get about six hours of video out of it. And in my experience, a solid eight to nine hours of general web browsing and use, which is less than the Lenovo's 13 hour claim, but still pretty good and it will definitely get you through a full day. As for ports, well, the Yoga Book is a little bit sparse. It has a single micro USB, which is also used for charging, as well as a micro HDMI port and a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So I really do like the Yoga Book, but having used it for the past few weeks, the novelty has worn off a little bit. I really like the premium style and feel of the Yoga Book from its lightweight and classy hinge to the Halo keyboard, but as cool as the keyboard looks, it really does take away from how productive I can be with the Yoga Book. The drawing and note taking features with the digitizer pen is terrific though, and if you're an artist or a creative sort, then you'll really love this machine. I really admire that Lenovo has pushed the boat out and tried something a bit different with the Yoga Book, but it does feel like a first generation device. I'd like to see a more powerful processor, thinner bezels, and also perhaps USB-C on the next version. So the Yoga Book is at its best when you're writing, drawing, or using it like a tablet to watch movies, browse websites, and draw. And I think that's why I would personally go for the Android version, because you get more apps that are better suited to pen and touch screen inputs. And it's also 50 pounds cheaper. A Windows 10 Yoga Book sounds like a good idea, but the lack of a proper keyboard and the weak performance means it's really only suited to tablet style tasks. So I really do like the Yoga Book and I would recommend it, but make sure you're getting it for the right reasons and don't expect it to replace your laptop. So that's what I think, but what do you think? Would you go out and buy a Yoga Book? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.